Hi, I'm Frankie, and in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can add an API from scratch to your Azure API Management instance. This series is based on the Azure API Management hands-on lab. If you want to follow along or do it on your own, you can find a link to it in the description. To begin in manually adding an API, we'll start in the Azure Portal overview page for your Azure API Management instance. We'll navigate to the APIs dropdown and then to the APIs page. Within here, we can see a handful of the different options we have to define new APIs. We'll add a manually defined API now. We'll see there's basic options if you want to fill it out quickly, but we'll use the full options to look at all the details. The API we'll be adding is called the Star Wars API. You can call it to get data about Star Wars characters, planets, and ships. To see an example of how this works, we see this endpoint that they have for the Star Wars API, where we can then add something like people slash two and get C3PO. I'll add a link to the Star Wars API in the description. Let's add this Star Wars API now. I'll copy the endpoint for the Star Wars API to my clipboard because we'll need it when we're manually adding it to Azure API Management. To begin creating the API, we'll start with the display name and the ID name in the description. The web service URL is the URL for the backend service. We'll paste this from our clipboard. It's HTTPS and the API URL suffix is to help us not have any conflicts when calling our Azure API management instance. For example, this is our base URL for Azure API management. If we want to call the people endpoint for our Star Wars API without a URL suffix, then our call would be this base URL with slash people to the Star Wars API people endpoint. But if we had another API that we add, say a public Marvel API that gave us data about Marvel characters, then we might have another API that also ends in slash people. This would be a conflict and we wouldn't be able to do this. So using the suffixes, we can have SW slash people and for the Marvel one, it could be something like slash Marvel slash people. That said, we'll add SW for our API URL suffix. Tags help you organize and manage your APIs. These are not the same tags that are associated broadly with your Azure resources. These tags help you specifically filter and find APIs in Azure API management. You can create tags in the API tag section when you're creating APIs, you can add those tags then to those APIs. And then when you're searching or filtering for APIs, you can do so with tags. These are separate from the tags that are associated with Azure resources. For what we're doing, I won't add any tags here. To use my API, I need to add it to a product. So I'll add it to my gold tier. And I'll use the managed gateway instead of a self-hosted or self-managed gateway. It's good practice to version your APIs, but we'll talk about versioning in a future video. So I won't click that and manage that here. I'll create my API now. And we see our new manually created Star Wars API. There's no operations to it. So let's create a few, few operations. We'll start with a get people operation to get all of the characters in Star Wars generally. It'll be a get request. It's the people endpoint. We'll have a description of get people. This is good. And we'll save this and create the next operation. Now let's create a get people by ID operation. It'll be get people by ID. It's, it's a get. And this time we'll add a URL template parameter for ID. When manually adding operations for an API, we have some options to give defaults for URL template parameters, query parameters, headers, and even example requests and responses. In this case, I just have a template parameter for our ID. I won't add any defaults in this case. We'll save this. And we now have two operations for our Star Wars API. In a new browser window, I've logged in as a user to the developer portal. Let's give our Star Wars API a try. We'll try to get people with our gold sub attached. Come down, send. 
200 response. Okay. Let's give our get people ID a try. It does require an ID for our character. We'll do two, send request, and we get C3PO back. Awesome, 200 okay. And this should be all you need to get started manually adding APIs to API management. If this video was helpful for you, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. And if you missed any of the past Azure API management videos I've put together, you can find some of those here. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.